Hey guys, today's video is about uh, traveling waves and standing waves. You can see we've got standing waves uh, occurring in that um, setup on the scope there. Uh, most of you will be familiar. This is a um, very similar sort of thing to what Ruslan uh, has shown. И Олег, привет. Вот, смотрите, вот такая вот диаграммка должна быть у вас в тот момент, когда вы настраиваете стоячую волну. Вот когда вы ее развернете, она должна быть вот такая. Вот только так вы сможете получить то, чего вам надо. Если скрутить ее, она будет вот так вот плавать. Вот таким макаром. Никак иначе. Вот если я сейчас изменю частоту генератора, да, то есть смотрите, вот сейчас 32 кГц, сейчас смотрите, я сейчас поменяю ее, буду уменьшать, уменьшать. Ну и хотя, нет, я сейчас оставлю то, что у меня было, там 32, да, то есть вот напряжение снижаю, смотрите, что происходит. Все, эффект исчез. Да, то есть его практически нет. Вот он. Да, то есть эффекта нет почти. Ну, он такой слабый-слабый, но э, на определенных частотах он будет сильный, да, то есть это я вам сразу говорю. И вот смотрите, да, то есть, ну, тут совсем он незаметно, если его скрутить, ну, почти этой стоящей волны нет, да. Вот она, а тут что-то пляшет, это фигня. Вот, поднимаем напряжение, смотрите сюда. Uh, this is a little bit different. I've got a slightly different setup. Uh, obviously not the grenade coil. I've just got two coils, one clockwise, one counterclockwise. Polarity does make a difference. Um, both coils are tuned to a resonant frequency, 480.230 kilohertz. Uh, the other coil is 480.349 349 kilohertz. Um, so each coil is tuned uh, slightly out of uh, resonance frequency if you like. Now I think what's important here to see is we have several effects occurring um, that are quite obvious but one of the most obvious and one of the most obvious that you'll be familiar with is we can see a definite sawtooth wave on the top of the blue trace and on the bottom of the blue trace. Um, if I can just point to it without bumping the camera. So the peak here, you can see we've got um, a definite sawtooth waveform down here. Okay, it's asymmetrical, meaning that the point of the sawtooth waveform is further to one side from here to here than what it is from there to there. So, what I'm trying to point out in this video is that um, waves and anti-waves uh, making a standing wave generate energy. Okay, this, I've said it before, this, the sawtooth waveform is the defining waveform for energy generation. Okay, my previous experiments, Chris's non-inductive coil experiment, shows a sawtooth waveform, um, and in that sawtooth waveform, we know there's extra energy in there over and above the energy that we would normally get out of a system. Well, that is very, very important to understand, very important to to see. So, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the yellow trace now. And you can see we've got a difference in amplitude that is fluctuating from, from here, from the top, from there, up to there. The difference in amplitude comes from standing wave um, phenomena. Okay, and you can actually see on the blue trace, you can actually see the wave flatten out and grow um, as it's doing that. And with that flattening out, that's what gives us the, the rise in amplitude and so on and so forth. This is a resonance phenomena, okay? We have resonance in both coils which are just out a little bit. One resonance frequency slightly different from the other. So that's where it comes from. The most important thing is we can see asymmetrical sawtooth wave on the blue waveform. I think that's the most important thing to be able to see in this video. The coils are really simple, it's just two, two standard coils, one clockwise, one counterclockwise. 
at this stage I've got no core in there, it's just an air core. I'm just running this experiment just to show you what, what I'm trying to show you. Okay, I think um, something else that needs to be pointed out is we have um, waveforms that are 180 degrees out of phase, which is equal and opposite. It's the, the same old uh, red magnetic vector arrows um, equal and opposite. So you can see the peak of this wave is opposite to the peak of this wave. Okay, so the phase difference here is 180 degrees. Okay, from peak to peak is one cycle. So that's 360 degrees. So in between the two is 180. So we have the blue wave in here 180 degrees opposite to the yellow wave. Okay, it's got to be equal and opposite. Equal and opposite is it's a fundamental uh, electrical generation um, situation. Uh, Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, um, d phi dt. There's always a negative n in there, so negative n d phi dt, n being the turns. Okay, n doesn't define the negative. Uh, the negative sign defines equal and opposite. It's always opposite. So with a approaching north pole, uh, our coil, if we were inside our coil, would generate uh, an opposing north pole, which would oppose the north pole coming in. Okay, so we have two north poles opposing. And that's what we see here. So the blue waveform is equal and opposite to the yellow waveform. Okay, and the difference in frequency is the standing wave that we can see here. Now the standing wave that we can see is at a different frequency. You can see it's, it's a lot slower than the frequency there. Uh, now unfortunately I don't know how to calculate that frequency but you can see that the standing wave frequency is a lot slower. Um, the standing wave frequency uh, the peaks when it's, when it's, if we were to freeze it there so you can see at this stage the frequency is the same, if, if that makes sense. So the frequency from peak to peak is the same, but the frequency of change of the waveform is different. Okay, so the, should we say the uh, amplitude variance in time is a different frequency, if that makes any sense. I'm not sure it will make any, any sense to anybody, but you can see you can see that there's a very slow change over time of the of the wave. Okay, you can see it's, it grows up and then it slowly grows down. Um, now you can also see the standing wave itself. It changes its uh, it it's changes its rate in time. So you can see that there's a very fast. Uh, uh, gain if you like, a very fast amplitude gain um, up the curve but then there's a, a, a difference in the downtime okay so the time okay time is the y-axis this way voltage is the amplitude axis okay which is x-axis up time amplitude um, this way so time axis on the y-axis uh, voltage on the x-axis Okay, so you can see that the time that it takes for the wave to fall down this slope here is completely different than the time it takes for the wave to increase up that slope. Okay, so there's, there's a variance, if you like, in there of the time that it takes for the wave to propagate, if that makes any, any sense. I hope it does. Um, again, please remember I'm still learning some of this stuff as well even though I have a reasonably good grasp on most of some most of this stuff some of it is still um, still stuff that I'm learning so I, I do urge people to go verify what I'm saying you can see it here on the scope so some of this will make sense to most people um, but you can see that the the sawtooth waveform the time it takes for the for the wave to come down is a different time that it takes for the wave to go up it's asymmetrical um, I think this is a, a very important waveform to study because this gives us a lot of um, a lot of information on what's going on in the coils. Uh, we can see voltage amplitudes changing. We can see the time 
so the time base from here to the trough the peak to the trough the time base from the peak to the trough there is completely different from the peak to the trough there on the blue wave okay so we have asymmetrical uh, waveform um, that is um, completely abnormal in most situations okay it's, it's just a, a function of what the coils are doing uh, to each other and how they're tuned to resonance now I want to point out as well resonance is the amplitude the voltage amplitude of the coil okay which is the x-axis which moves up and down like this so the peak of the voltage on the coil will be at its maximum only when there's resonance involved okay we need resonance to get the maximum voltage if we don't have resonance these waves will be very 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 small you have to sort of zoom right in to to see them um, and it'll be very hard to to get anything working so you need resonance so you can get amplitude I always urge people I always say to people start off with very small experiments uh, some some of this sort of stuff is very hard and it's much 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 easier to work with low voltages than what it is with high voltages so be careful with your voltage um, there's disclaimers all over my website so I urge everybody be careful it can damage equipment and even worse it can damage you so be very careful standing waves are two traveling waves moving in equal and opposite directions we get a standing wave when the two waves um, match um, the magnetic fields um, cancel and then the current wave or the current um, amplitude would double uh, Floyd Sweet told us this in his paper um, several papers outline the basic concept um, what we can see is the standing wave in there but what I didn't show you was um, how the standing wave can be more pronounced and how we can actually view it uh, from a slightly different angle um, simply by winding the wrong way the amplitude the time base out okay so what we can see is we can see obviously 180 degree waves equal and opposite out of phase um, simply just by winding the time base out um, this shows us a very good um, approximation of the amplitude of the wave, the phase of the wave um, and what the waves are doing to each other. Remembering what we're measuring at the moment is voltage, remembering the voltage on the terminals of the coils so we can see this from a voltage point of view not a current point of view. Um, I think it's important to see that Ruslan and a few others have pointed this sort of phenomena out before um, I think in my opinion uh, and I've always said that experiment is extremely important you can learn so much from a very very simple experiment so I do recommend everybody get on the bench and just experiment just learn what the coils can do how they interact together what is the interactions um, and just very very simple things like that because what we're viewing here is not something that we would normally see in most experiments this is a little bit on the fringe of most normal experiments with, with any wave there's a transfer of um, particles okay so in, in any wave there's a difference in velocity of the particles in the wave depending on where they are at the wave and all you need to do to visualize this is go to the beach and watch the waves washing up on shore now at the peak of a standing wave everything stands still okay but as the standing wave falls everything rushes down okay so if you like there's a, a as a standing wave peaks uh, everything is still everything everything's not really moving very much there's there's no real motion of particles but you can see by the you can see by the sawtooth waveform here that there's a, a steep incline okay and then a steep decline so at every point on these inclines and declines we've got particles moving which is basically it's it's a force between the two coils uh, the force between the two coils 
is basically a pump and and I think that's what we really need to think about we're, we're pumping particles down the coils we're doing with the resonance okay uh, the fundamental definition of power is current which is 6.24 times 10 to the 18th electrons per second equaling 1 ampere times voltage which is the um, charge on the, uh, the the coulomb coulomb charge on the terminals of the wire so uh, power is a volumetric quantity and being that it's a volumetric quantity we can pump it just like we can pump water water's the, it's the same basic base concept okay um, it's been said by many many times by many many different people I'm not the first person to say this but the electric generator doesn't generate the energy it pumps the energy pumps the energy from the source so what we need to focus on is building the pump and you can see exactly here this is the situation the scenario required to build the pump all right everybody this is all i want to sort of say and show on this video we'll keep it reasonably short um, have fun enjoy and can't wait to see your experiments